Hey, peace and blessings to you. My name is Jerry B. I am the Entree Musician and so are you. We have an extraordinary episode for you today. If you've known me more than 10 minutes, you know that I'm a documentary hound. I mean, you can make a documentary about this microphone in front of me and I'll sit and watch it. But the most important documentaries to me are those who really chronicle the lives of great men and women. Today is no exception. I want to bring on a good friend of mine who is a fellow entree musician, and his name is Robin Williams. He's an extraordinary young man. We're going to talk about a lot about this film that he put together, but first, I just want you to meet him. Robin, welcome to the podcast, man. How you doing, brother? I'm good, brother. How are you? It's good to be here. I'm glad that you're here. I know that we had to do some tweaking for our schedule to get you on, but man, I'm, I'm gra- glad that you made it. And we're going to be uh, introducing some guests that you've brought along to talk about this documentary. Now, let's just briefly yeah. introduce what the documentary is, and then I want to talk to you about you for a second. But uh, okay. let's introduce this incredible documentary. Well, the documentary is about my mother, the legendary Marion Williams. She was a uh, well-known gospel singer. She started with the famous Ward Singers. And from there, um, her career, she left the Ward Singers and then she uh, went started a group called the Stars of Faith. And some of the members of the Ward Singers went with her. And then um, after her career with the Stars of Faith really launched, they did a, uh, a theater play called in Black, uh, Black Nativity with Langston Hughes. And it was based on an actual Christmas uh, album that my mother did with the Stars of Faith. And he wrote the Black Nativity around the music. And so that was a great honor. And from there, from uh, touring all over the world, she went on her own and um, became very successful in so many ways, being first on a lot of things. And so, I needed to, as a being the only child, I wanted to uh, do something to let people know um, about my mother um, because I felt like, you know, I can be, you know, kind of, uh, I guess, uh, would you say more, uh, just a little bit of the only child I needed people to know, you know, how and how proud I was to be with her, uh, have her as my mother and really realizing how much you know influence she had on people so uh, we made this documentary um to really just get it out there to let people know who she really was so well it's it's a remarkable documentary i i can't wait to get into it a little bit deeper you had the pleasure of uh it being distributed and airing on Amazon Prime, but we're going to talk about all of that. But why don't you give me the cliff note version of who you are? You've obviously, you know, a son of a legendary gospel singer, but you've got some dynamic musical roots <laughs> yourself, my brother. Yes. Uh, well, I started out, you know, I uh, as a church, I was raised up in the church all my life. I started um, playing uh, bongos at the church which was uh, eventually one of my um, getting my start traveling with my mother at an early age. Um, I played my first big gig was, I guess, or gig period was at Carnegie Hall with her playing bongos. And from there, uh, I moved up to drums. Um, you know, being, being usually after the end of services, you know, the musicians would hang out and play drums and I just happened to start playing on it, never took lessons or anything. And I picked it up and from there I uh, became, I guess, well enough to where people wanted me to play for them, especially my mother. And uh, I was playing for a lot of choirs here in Philadelphia, um, local choirs. And then I started traveling with her and then other uh, groups overseas. So, um, and then I, uh, me and my wife, we actually formed our own group eventually. So um, now I'm doing uh, music, I guess, electronically syncing, um, 
me and my wife were like a writing team. We did, we were performing. Um, you know, we were doing, you know, our gigs, uh, it was more poetry with uh, live music, with background singers and everything. So we started that and then we uh, cut our first uh, CD and um, we started using, you know, different uh, dolls, which was Reason and um, Logic, and um, which my wife, she actually uh, introduced that to me because I didn't know, you know which anything one, about Reason it. or Logic? Reason. Really, it was both of them. Cause yep. really, but she used she used reasons more, and we. Uh, so I started using reasons, and then I learned. You know, that's where I really learned about um, how to do beats and everything. And um, because at that time in my life, I didn't know I had a lot of uh, creativity in, in me, but I didn't know how to bring it out. And when she introduced, you know, reasons to me, I end up, man, I started in a whole new world of creating beats and, you know, music and everything. And from there, we started out, uh, our, like I said, our first CD. And then from there, it just grew to the point where I started writing and, you know, writing music and she would write the lyrics. I started, I knew a little bit about on the keyboards. I know how to, you know, I know chords. I can put chords together. I Like my wife said, you're not a piano player. Now, that's another story once we get into, I'll tell you who is the piano player. She is, you know, she's wow. very accomplished. She can write, she can score, she can do all that, but you don't do all that now. That's another uh, thing by itself. But so through there, so I've been busy and with the the documentary, it really, you know, expanded me to now that, you know, I'm in a, um, getting introduced to um, doing some scoring with, uh, we're doing a short film, me and a uh, Amber, um, and we're going to be, um, so I'm learning how to do that. I'm still nervous about it because it's my first one. So, but um that's exciting, but I'm ready for the challenge and everything. So there you go. That's my life. Um, traveling. I've been over the world just about. Um, I think the farthest I've been was Indonesia. And that was the farthest. But uh, and I just thank God for my life, man, because it's it's exciting. You know, I've done things with some people may not get the chance to met a lot of people. You know, from Grace Kelly to Dizzy Gillespie to Nina Simone to, you know, a whole lot of other people that I can name. But it's just been great. And I understand that your godmother was the dynamic Mahalia Jackson, correct? Correct. A lot of I tried not to put that, you know, put it out. But I'm proud to you know, you know, people may not realize that. But, um, yeah, she, she was my godmother. And because uh, her and my mother were real close. Uh, they were real close friends. Well, we're definitely going to get deep into the uh, documentary in just a moment. But, uh, you know, I want everyone to know that you are a fellow entree musician. You're part of the entree musician community and yeah. uh, part of our monthly mastermind. So, you know, you are bringing great value to us when we get together every week, man. So I really appreciate you, brother. You have oh, anything to say too. as far as being a part of the community? Oh, yeah. Great. Uh, it has helped me. It has built up my uh, creativity, learning how to um, get your, have your business right. And I'm still working on that. Um, and that uh, over 50, you can still create music and for people to enjoy. And, you know, that, and don't stop, you know, being creative just because you're at a certain age. You know, you still have a lot to give, you know, to this world. And um, you just have to find your niche. And with the entree musicians, they will help you. And um, they will encourage you. We will encourage you. Uh, I'll put it like that. Absolutely. And um, so I wouldn't pass, don't pass the opportunity to join entree musicians because it does help you. And it does give you a lot of information about how to, you know, stay current, how to get into sync, all of that, uh, even collaborating with other um, musicians. Um, and it's it's just been great for me. I am excited to see how far 
we can go. And I know there's other things coming down the pike with Jerry and the Entre Musicians. So stay tuned. Absolutely stay tuned. And without further ado, man, you have brought two beautiful, brilliant young ladies with us that I'm going to ask that you take the pleasure to introduce. And we want to talk about their work with you on this wonderful documentary. Yes, so I'm so excited. Uh, Lady Amber, she is like, uh, she's been a god since. Um, she is a director of the, the documentary. She did everything, she did the editing. Um, and she's one of the, she's just great. A very talented young lady. I love her so much. Um, I try, I try to talk to her. I want to talk to her more, but my wife, you always say, leave her alone. She got to work and everything. But this young lady is so talented. She has a documentary out that she has, uh, and she'll tell you some more about it. But um, this lady, Amber, uh, Monet Spencer is just great. And she's a director of the uh, legendary uh, Marion Williams documentary. And not but not least, my gorgeous and incredible talented. Uh, I'm not going to give you all the titles because she wants me to say I'm not going to. <laughs> but my wife, Karen, is just great, man. This is my rock. This is like my, you know, hype person. Both of them are. You know, they, they just encourage me, you know, but she's been there through my um, my ups and downs, my sickness. Uh, if a lot of people don't know, I had I had two um, kidney transplants and um, and finally the, the, the last one um, I have now is for three years now. It's going on three years. And, you know, she's been there through and there was other dif difficulty, but God has blessed me. But. She's been there through thick and thin, man, and I couldn't do none of this stuff without her. So, ladies and gentlemen, my queen, Karen Moore. Ladies, <laughs> blessings to you. I want, you know, if you're watching this, um, you know, I want you to know that to my um, left, your right, uh, perhaps, is Amber. And sitting beside yeah. her husband in a separate screen is Karen. So, you know, right. everybody knows who you're talking about. But if you don't yeah. mind, I, I want to uh, um, just uh, interview Karen firstly, because I think the first question for Karen before we get into the music and the documentary is, how did you guys meet? How did you hook up with Mr. Robin Williams? <laughs> well, uh I, I used to play piano and uh, we were playing for a choir anniversary. My godmother had invited both of us to the choir anniversary. And so it's funny, I always tell the story. He asked me for my phone number and then I called him and he had time to talk to me. So I was like, well, okay, <laughs> I don't have time for you. <laughs> but we happened to meet the following year and he asked me for my phone number again. I said to him, I don't understand why you don't have it. But I gave him a break, and uh, that that that's how our history started. And we we started dating, and then um, he asked me to marry him, and here we are. Wow! She gave me the she gave me the clean version, Jerry. That's the clean <laughs> version. You know what? Maybe uh, maybe uh, that's all we need. You know what I mean? Right, right. Well, yeah, that's the other part. That other part. I to talk to you. Well, what you asked me for my number for? Yeah. First of all, at the time, I had a 16, 16 year old son living with me, and there was a, a situation that I had to take care of. And when she called, it was at a bad time. And I asked her, "Could I call you back?" But no, she wants. She trying to say, you know, you didn't want to talk to me and stuff. I had a situation. And I explained to her, you know. So then she had, you know, she trying to be a little, you know, bougie or you know whatever. And uh, so we didn't talk. So then when I uh, finally saw her again, we had to play with uh, together and I asked for her phone number. She said, you don't have my phone? I said, well, I lost my phone, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I had to get a new phone and, you know, contacts and everything, you know, so right, I broke it down. I had to break it down. Well, she, she broke down. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'm 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 glad to hear the story, both versions. But now, how how long have you been married? <laughs> How long have we been married, sweetie? Feels like 25. It'll be, it'll be 17. It'll be 17 in September. 18 in September. Oh, 18 in September, right. Yeah. 18 in September. I've, I've learned you always I, ask that question with both spouses on. Right, right. <laughs> My goodness. Well, well, before we before we engage uh, with uh, Amber, what's it like? I mean, you both are musicians. I, I heard, Karen, you say that you play, you used to play piano. I, I'm sure it's just like riding a bike. You could sit down and get right back on point. But what's it been like, you know, as two musicians? I, I look at you two with the music that I hear coming out of the studio, almost as if you're like a Ashford and Simpson type. So, you know, what has the, your journey been like together musically? Okay, he's laughing because I have this thing that I say that uh, I want to talk to Valerie Simpson and ask her if Nick Ashford gave her the drop gives me. I say that all the time. Can somebody call Valerie Simpson? I need to know if Nick gave me the but it's been, it's really been a wonderful experience and we've been able to, to really do these things because we have so much love and care for one another. And I feel like he's so talented. And I just want to say here while I have the opportunity about how much I believe the entree musician has really helped him to, to build his confidence. I mean, I even hear him when he comes off a of calls and he'll say to me, okay, you that these people are producing is just amazing. It's phenomenal. And I'll tell him, so is your music. But it's really given him a lot of confidence. And I'm so grateful for that, Harry, that it has really inspired him and given him the confidence. Because I tell people all the time that my husband is not the Zoom guy. He's not going on these things. If it's not football, he's really not interested. But he comes every Sunday and he looks forward to it. So I'm so grateful for that. But he's you know, he has so much talent and we'd be able to work it out together because I'm I do a little writing, but he does most of the the musical part of it. So when we're poetic soul, um, I'm the poet, he's the soul. And so we're able to really come together and do this music and combine the poetry with the music. So it's been a wonderful experience. It really has. Well, that's wonderful. And I got to tell you, you know, you have such excellent music. I can't wait until, you know, it's out on the street. I know you do have a project that's already out there and we'll talk about that uh, as we go along. But, you know, the things that Robin brings to the Entree Musician as far as, you know, on Sunday nights when we're presenting music, it's just so unique and so soulful. So you got the soul down. Just waiting. Some of, some of the stuff that he's presenting, I know that you have haven't you know put it in his final form yet but well, i mean we could tell right off yeah. the bat like, yeah, he always asked me for stuff and i tell him i said jerry the stuff i i don't have this stuff is just still at the uh, beginning stage it's, it's, it's just a, just like a little piece of uh a clay still working on it so uh, it's, it's absolutely beautiful music, but I want to uh, to speak with Amber because, man, being the director of the legendary Marion Williams, it's just been like, wow, you know what? Take us on the journey of what were you brought with? Because, I, you know, again, I've watched documentaries, but being involved in the creation, what is that like? You, you, you presented this raw material and you have this vision. How do you walk through that process? First of all, this was an absolute honor to even be attached to this project. When I got to listen to Miss Marion's um, interviews and hear her voice and hear how people spoke of her, I was humbled to even be able to share her story. So I'm grateful to Mr. Robin for even trusting me with his mother. Um, but second of all, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it is a lot. Um, but I've been blessed to learn all different roles in filmmaking through internships and school um, that I've, you know, learned how to be, be a cinematographer and that helps with your editing. 
Um, but we spent a lot of hours on this project. I, I don't want to put a number to it because I know it's going to be wrong. Uh, but years, years of interviews, of edits. I had some days where I would just be in my dark office editing my poor husband for like 12 hours sometimes. On, but to me, that's my that's my safe haven. That's my 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 happy place. So I enjoy it. Um, but when you sit and you listen to these interviews, and particularly like, like I said, Miss Marion's voice, you hear how important it is what you do, not just what you do, but how people speak of you after you leave this earth. And to me, that's a testament of what storytelling should be about documenting these these people and these lives that impacted so many even to this day mm -hmm. um and i just enjoy doing it i'm a huge documentary nerd as well i have like 15 on every streaming platform just queued up ready to go um and i love independent documentaries so i'll go to like local film festivals and just watch like a whole bunch of things so i feel like sometimes those are best <laughs> um it's a special place it, it is a special place and it's definitely it, it's, it has taught me so much and i'm still learning still spun still growing have way more to go and to <laughs> improve on and that was my very first documentary so that was tell my, that us was a little first. bit about how you got started then you said you're a cinematographer did you go to film school or was this something that earlier in your formative years you said you know i'm going to be a filmmaker what happened so no, actually, I, I was a dance major uh, at Temple University. I traveled around the world in my high school years dancing like from Paris and, um, a, you know, I danced with a lot of gospel artists uh, like Dorinda Clark Cole, Kirk Franklin, um, and went to school for that. In my junior year, I actually switched to production media studios production at Temple um, and just decided to go full force with media. And I got an internship and at the number one radio station in Philadelphia I would take the bus at six o'clock in the morning every day, Monday through Friday and edit until about 11 a.m. every day and just sped up my learning process from there. Um, and that's how I fell in love with storytelling. I always liked to talk as a child anyway, so it was an easy transition. <laughs> my poor parents. but. Yeah, I think the dancing part actually uh, helped me with editing because they're very similar. You have to be musically engaged uh, and that helps my style of editing as well. And that, you know, gives you more control over the piece as well. Wow. So how, how did the, the Williams approach you? Uh, with with this what was the early conversations like and I, i'm going to ask these type of questions because i'm really fascinated because i've seen the final product and it's just like you know how did all these pieces fit together but who approached you robin or or karen with this project yeah it's a good question actually dr karen i was a dancer on her show the poetic blues and um performed she was talking about she wanted to record i was like hey yeah i actually do videography as well. <laughs> Just like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah. And so um, I filmed the show, like I think the following year or something. Um, and Doc, uh, Mr. Robin was a part of that production as well. And he was like, I want to do, I want to do a film by my mom. And I was like, cool, let's do it. This is even before I knew who Miss Mary was. I was like, let's do it. It's great. I just got out of college. I'm excited. I need to learn and grow and network. And then he told me who his mom his shoes. He was like, Google, Google it, because you young, Google it. And I was like, I know, I know. And I'm like, oh, okay. God, God, okay, yes, yes, amen. This is this is Miss Marion. <laughs> and the rest is history. And here we are. My my family now. We are we are definitely family. Uh and this is great because I'm actually from the East Coast. I mean West Coast, sorry, I'm from California. Yeah. So besides my husband's family, I don't have um, any really family out here. Now adopted family, but that, that was a part of my transition to the East Coast and getting acclimated with that. 
Wow. Well, you know, we got to dive into the process, though. So we, we've made the introduction and uh, you both felt that she was the one. Amber was the one. Why? What was the decision? You know, what was it about her that the two of you felt like, yes, we can entrust, you know, this legacy into her young, formative hands? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I guess I'll start. Um, once we saw what she did with the uh, with Poetic Blues and the editing, um, again, the main purpose at the time, and Kay, you can um, chime right in if you uh, But, um, you know, I had a vision, but I didn't know what else to do. And just to think that she could do it and to see, I didn't know what the process was was going to be, how, how we were going to do it. Um, we had bits and pieces of, of, you know, pictures. We had pictures. Um, we had more, but there was a time that there was a, a company that wanted to do a, a, a documentary on her. And it's been over, I guess, almost 30 years now. And they, they the one, they got some pictures and um, they had the rights, you know, I had given the rights to some of the pictures and everything to use. And they had started it up to a point and it never finished it. I don't know why, budget wise. So um, when I, you know, presented it to Amber, I was like, you know, what can we do? How we can do that, do this. And then first we started looking if we can get footage, uh, live footage, which it was a lot on YouTube of her, but you know, for us to try to get all the footage and we had to get permission and everything. And um, I remember uh, the, the gentleman that interviewed my mother on the radio, um, he had told me about it, that he still had it and asked me, I don't know what the conversation was, but he said, well, you know, do you want it? You know, oh, I know what it was because ever so often, uh, even now on the radio station, it's a, it used to be an AM station and they would have a, uh, called Precious Memories and he would have a segment and he would do precious memory of old older uh choirs or people and he would interview them and everything even the dixie hummingbirds and you know all that so so he had this footage and he asked me he said do you want it and i said yeah sure never thought about what I, eventually I, I would be using it for that and so as we me and amber start talking and then my wife you know I said, well, I got this footage. I got this, you know, this footage uh, interview. You know, let's see what we can do or something like that. And uh, so Amber said, okay. She, you know, and we start putting our hands together. So she said, look, why don't we let her tell her story? And then we'll just build around that because um, that would be the strong point because she can, you know, she really brings it up from the time when she starts and even to that uh, in ending you know, almost to her death and stuff. So, uh, and that's how we, uh, that's how we started. We didn't know, we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, I didn't know, I had no money. <laughs> As is usually up. the case. Yeah, I had no money. And yeah. We just started um, putting and, stuff And one of the things I think I do with Amber is that she is, Amber's very creative. Yeah. Very, very creative. And she has, she has a knack for being able to see from so many different angles. And one of the things that I think is very so very special about this documentary, as Robin said, is Marion telling her own story. And so Amber being able to use the interview that was done with Marion Williams, being able to incorporate all of the other things into the film. Um, Amber's just amazing, she's just phenomenal at what she does. And even at a young age, Amber. No, she's still she's not that old still, but I'm just saying at the time, kind of fresh out of fresh out of college and, and um and and young, but she has such a gift for filmmaking that she's able to be so creative and see things in so many different ways and pull things together that even if we did um Boy Blues, I was just blown away by how she filmed the tape. And it just looks, it just looks amazing. And it, the cohesiveness of it and the way she's able to pull things together, it's a gift. 
It's a gift that we were blessed to be able to have. Likewise. I, it's mutual. <laughs> I should say discover the gift. Right. Uh, but if we can take credit, we will. Um, to have discovered this gift. Yes. As, and to the point where this film was even able to be presented at the Cannes Film Festival through, um, I always forget the name. Pavilion Afrique. Right, Pavilion Afrique. You know, I wasn't going to say it. At the Cannes Film Festival. It's because she is just, just phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Thank you, Dr. Karen. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, go with <laughs> I can't, I can't say nothing about it because my wife will defend her in a minute. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Right. Don't remember. Uh -uh. Just phenomenal. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see what she does uh, for going forward. Even mm -hmm. this, the the phenomenal. I can't wait. To see. I look forward to being there when she. You may gonna be right there with me, okay? Cause period. <laughs> <laughs> There when she accepts her Academy Award. I can't wait. Yeah. Because <laughs> I know that. I agree with that wholeheartedly because one of the things that I think I remarked uh, before we started recording, um, you know, with Robin being in the entre musician community and we're talking, we're talking about projects we're working on. And this uh, documentary had just entered, I think, into, you know, Amazon Prime. And so he's telling mm -hmm. us a little bit about it. And, you know, I'm, you know, we're an encouraging community, but you know, when a when a guy says, "Hey, we, you know, I'm I'm doing this documentary on my mom," you know, it's like, okay, well, that's honorable, you know. And um, you know, my mom was a gospel singer. You know, who, whose mom in the black community wasn't a gospel singer? I mean, you know, right. You know, and I'm not right. thinking for a second that it is the legendary. Marion Williams, right? I mean, just just think about it for just half a second. Marion Williams is a common name, right? But not yeah. the Marion Williams, right? Yeah. So he sends the link to us, and I'm floored. I'm absolutely floored. I, I rent it on uh, Amazon Prime. I go through it, and Amber, uh, just like Dr. Karen says, flawless, incredible, engaging, grabs you by the throat, doesn't let you go. And as soon as the credits roll, I hit start again because I'm thinking I must have missed something. And I sit through it a second time, absolutely mesmerized and engaged just like the first time I saw it. I've been telling everybody about it. That's why I told Robin, hey, first of all, man, you got to come on and we have to talk about it. We have to introduce it to the Entree Musician platform and the community here. And tomorrow, where we're taping on a Saturday, tomorrow, he'll be telling us in the Mastermind community more about, you know, what went on in the details of getting it to Amazon. And, and Amber, these are some more questions that I have for you with respect to the journey of once it's done, then you got to start all over again with getting the project placed. And what was that like for you? Yeah, I want to, um, Mr. Robin probably is going to be able to answer this better, but I also want right. to throw credit to um, uh, Tara Renee uh, of the African American Women in Cinema organization, uh, who uh, was an uh, executive producer uh, as well on this piece, who is very knowledgeable and uh, equipped with the resources that takes uh, to do something as complicated as distribution, as hard as it is to make, as hard as it is to make a film, it is even harder or just as hard to get it to your audience. Which is, it sounds crazy because we live in such a digital uh, centric world post COVID, especially. But getting it to the market um, is actually a, a strategy that takes someone that has experience. So I'll let Mr. Robin take that one on. Yeah, um, uh, I guess I'll pass it on to my wife eventually. But um, this young, the young lady, um, Tara Renee, um, we had, we're, I'm good. Uh, actually, my mother and her parents were good friends um, in the uh, Church of God in Christ um, community. And she knew, and they were from Florida, but my mother was from Florida, and she kind of knew their family. And then they connected. And so, um, before then, we had talked about, me and her had talked about um, doing something about my mother. 
and it was about maybe it was maybe about six seven years and then um we connected again um and i told her you know we're working on a doc you know a documentary and everything so she said oh that's nice and everything you know she thought it was at the early stage well when she saw it and we were finished she said oh my gosh she said well you know we can do something with this and i was like uh, okay you know i just want again and maybe you know when i say this really my whole thought process was just getting this film out that was all i wanted to do i wasn't thinking about the money i wasn't thinking about what it might do down the road it never crossed all i wanted to do was get it out there and the only way i could get it out was social media facebook or instagram that was it so but she took it to another level and because of her at the african-american women in cinema she's the uh the founder and i let my wife finish all that because she can talk better than i can so go ahead Kay. <laughs> Tara was able to get it to someone who specializes in distribution. And I think that's the key, is that being able to get it to someone who specializes in distribution, someone who's out there and pushing films to distributors to get it into the market, that's really what you need. And Tara was able to connect with someone who specializes in distribution. And so that's how the film started going to and there's some other places that he's working out deals with now too. So he'll be able to see it on other platforms also. But that's the key, somebody who specializes in distribution. Yeah, uh, his name is Peter. And um, thank you, babe. Um, his name is Peter. And um, he, um, when he saw it, he believed in it. And, you know, he didn't want no money up front, you know, um, and he, he's taken it. Um, we've, we did get some uh, notices in Hong Kong and Croatia, um, and we're just waiting for them to whatever they have to do. And then there's some other platforms, but um, through that with Peter, we did have somebody else. Um, I think they called him an ag ag aggregator or something like that. And um, I'll tell you a quick, I won't mention no names, but anyway, you know, we did have an offer for, for, for a major uh, streaming service, but they wanted a streaming service they wanted more full control of it and i didn't feel right at the time of signing that contract and then there were some other things so um you know sometimes you you know when things you think things are good you know uh and you know you get these opportunities sometimes you just have to and if you say you trust god you have to rely on him and I didn't feel right in my in my spirit about the the uh, um, the agreement, and she didn't either when uh, when the uh, when it came across our table. So we let it go, and then you know it was it was for a while. Once we met Peter, I think it was almost a year after that, you know, and we was like, you know, I said, okay, well, you know, this was going on because I started questioning was the film was strong enough because people, we was putting at film festivals and everything. And then Tara, she got it at the, uh, at the Cannes Film Festival with the uh, Afrique uh, Pavilion. And, um, you know, that was a major thing. You know, I never had a film, Amber never had a film that she directed going to the, the Cannes, you know. Um, so that was a great accomplishment. And then from there we did the, uh, what's the human um, NAACPK or the um, it was something else? What was the she was in? Yeah, urban. Uh, the urban. Right. So, um, so we had you know we had let people and then Essence. We sent it to Essence. Uh, Essence liked it, um, and um, but you know things didn't go well. But I should say it didn't go well. They didn't accept it. But anyway. You know, and so it's, at that time went on and everything, you know, you start, you start questioning yourself, especially with me, because I didn't know anything about the film business. And Terry was saying, well, you know, these things could be for, they could take forever, you know, two or three years before something jumps off, you know, and I was like, oh, okay. You know, and so I, I just let it go. And then, you know, about a year later, once we met with Peter, 
you know, Keita started doing things and stuff. I think now it's about a year and a half now. And then he finally, you know, he called us up about Amazon Prime. And, I, you know, we looked at it and it was a go. So that's how it, it comes about. And you got to have good relationship. And, and we felt strong about Peter, too, once I talked to him and how he felt about the film you know, felt about the film and everything. And um, he's been, you know, never met him until then. You know, I didn't know who he was or whatever. And he's been right there in our corner, you know, letting, you know, getting these things and, and um, in this distribution. So this is the first step now. We're so excited. We don't know what, what else is uh, next. You know, we're looking for, we're looking for, you know, to make, get a movie or a mini series or something, and it's going to happen, you know. But I have to, we have to be patient, and sometimes my patience is very short, you know. Because again, even as you know, Jerry, with my music, with our my music, I have so much. I want to get it out. I got to get it out. I got, you know, I want people to hear what we have and everything. It's creativity that we have, you know. But it's all timing, and again. You know, we talk about, you know, we can deal with timing until, it, you know, it hits you. And then you be like, oh, man, when is going to, you know, but it's all in, it's all divine timing. You're absolutely right about that. Absolutely. Well, Amber, if I may, let me ask you about Daphne Pictures. Would you, would you tell me what Daphne is and, and what your, your uh, projects are look going forward? Yeah, Daphne is a street I grew up with, um, with my, um, my grandmother's block. I spent a lot of time there um, and she passed away my junior year um, in high school. And I decided to create the company off of Daphne Street, which is where she lived her whole life. Um, and then I just love sharing stories about people that don't necessarily think their story deserves to be told or doesn't understand that there's a platform for them. So for example, the documentary that I have now out in this festival circuit is called Reading is Love, Fathers for Early Childhood Literacy, starring Brent Johnstone and Akeem Staples, Fathers Read 365. They're a nonprofit organization of stay-at-home dads and ex-Temple uh, football alumni who make reading fun and they give out free books in the city. They've given over 100,000 books uh, to kids because they want to stress the importance of early engagement, particularly with fathers and fathers in the community. And that uh, film actually is accepted officially into the New Jersey International Film Festival. Um, so we'll be showing and premiering it on their closing night, which is another huge honor um, in June. So that's my current project. I'm working with Mr. Robin on the short film. That's my, um, not a documentary, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a drama. Um, yeah, I just love telling stories and interviewing people. That That's my passion. And I wanna also teach other young uh, creatives editing. So I've taught a few editing courses. So I just don't think there's a lot of us that are in that market. And it's, we're so, there's so many of us that could be good at it. It's just, it just takes guidance patience <laughs> and the right uh, equipment. But um, I know particularly for being a black female, I don't know a lot of us in this market, especially. So I'm always trying to take young young girls under my wings. Like you want to learn how to edit? I promise it's easy. I'll teach you. <laughs> and that's absolutely beautiful. It, it really is because, uh, you know, that's what it takes. It takes not just having the gift, but being able to extend that to someone else. And that enlarges our community. When you just don't keep it, you don't hoard it. You say, hey, yo, this is enough for everyone. You know, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Man, oh, man. Well, I, I, I can't tell you how delighted I am to have had all of you to uh, just share this journey with, with, you know, I feel like it's me. I was going to say with us, but you know what? <laughs> I've been so curious about this right. film. It just feels like, you know, I'm, I'm taking some personal stock and what has happened and uh, just to be able to have met you, uh, Amber, Sister Karen, and uh, of course, Robin, to, to know you, Jerry, thank you as a fellow if entree I musician. Say, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry, I'm sorry, Jerry, to interrupt you, but I have to, uh, I have to toot my uh, horn with my, about my wife. Uh, I'm plugging, I'm plugging in a, her, her thing. 
she wouldn't tell you unless I knew, you know. She has an organization organization uh, that she's built from the ground up. It's called I Am the Color of Beautiful International. And um, I, if you can give me just three minutes to let her tell you what it's all about, I would I would appreciate it. And um, she can tell you. Yes. Thank you so much, Sue. Um, I don't need a whole three minutes. I'm the Color of Beautiful Global is a global movement. Where we are addressing colorism. And so I have a, a very short film out called Who Told You Your Black Is Not Beautiful? And so we're doing screenings of it, conversations on colorism to help in particularly darker black women move beyond the hurt and trauma of colorism and also women in other communities of color about dealing with colorism. That's beautiful. Absolutely. You know, you, 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 you set that up, Robin, right on time, because generally <laughs> I ask at the end of every uh, uh, podcast, I said, you know, uh, you all ha have are so busy and have been involved in so many projects. Uh, was there a question that you wanted me to ask <laughs> that I haven't asked? And maybe you can answer that question. So that was right on point. But perhaps oh, okay. there is any other information uh, that you feel pertinent, you know, to share. Uh, by all means, please take this opportunity to do so before we wrap up. Uh, you can find us at Color of Beautiful. Color is spelled C O L O D are because you are beautiful the color of beautiful dot black is our website we're on all social media platforms at the color of beautiful and uh, we'll be doing some virtual screenings coming up so if you follow us you'll be able to check and find out when those virtual screenings and conversations on colorism are happening they just had one in atlanta that i got the opportunity to attend yeah. and fashion show dr karen it was amazing i was honored to be there and the crowd was very very encouraged by your mission so don't let don't let her uh low play yeah, she's traveling exactly. she is around <laughs> and people are really engaged with her mission and i'm just inspired to to be able to witness it thank you so much well, I'll yeah, make sure that I have me. those links in the show notes um, for The Color of Beautiful. And I make I will make sure that I include the U and spell it correctly so that uh, people can just click through as we are promoting uh, this episode. Thanks, Thank man. You. Thank you so much. Uh, it's my Thank honor. You. My honor. Thank you for uh, your hard work, your diligence, your perseverance in making sure that the legendary Miriam Williams is a show worth watching and whatever happens with respect to a mini series or you know extension of the documentary or sequel or whatever you want to do just make sure you let me know okay oh, because definitely, uh definitely. I'm, I'm your uh biggest fan i love it i think that everybody should see it i think that whatever awards that it hasn't won already that you guys need to enter it into those competitions so that you can snag yeah. up everything we will we will and um the other thing is, don't forget Poetic Soul. We are a, the writing team. <laughs> that's my that's my baby. Uh, it, you know, the documentary is my baby too, but that's really where I started with my wife. And um, so you can see us at uh, Facebook all and uh, Poetic Soul, and then our website, thepoeticsoulsound.com. dot com. Dot com. Mm -hmm. Now, um, yeah. now, so when when can we expect the project to be out? Let us know that. Well, we're doing a lot. We have three singles out now. Um, I actually played them earlier in our beginning stages at the Entree Musicians, but I'll let you hear them again. And um, so um, they're all out on social media. One is called No Not One. That's a love song. Love, yeah, love song about uh, somebody me, you know, a person meeting somebody at the fair. Um, it was written by a young man called Holden Jones. Um, I, I did the music, yeah, and, um, and he did, and then my wife did the poetry on it. Um, then we have another song called The Plan. The Plan is an inspirational song um, with my wife doing spoken, spoken word on that, and a young man named Praximus. Um, he's from, um, I think, Nigeria. Um, he did uh, the vocals on that. Um, then we have well, another one called Be There. Be There is a funky 
uh, and a funky type of smooth jazz. It's all mixed together with um, poetry, rap, and um, uh, and music uh, put together. And um, so uh, they're all uh, with Distro Kids. You can act, you can look up Poetic Soul, and we're there. And of course, all the other major platforms too. So I have to pull more. I'm going to put more, Jerry. And uh, we'll be, uh, you'll be seeing more. So um, again, so again, I thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I won't, I won't forget you, brother. You know that, and the love I have for the entrepreneur musicians and everybody. And uh, again, we appreciate you for having this. And you know, you don't give up because you're building a great platform for people and everything. And I've told you this behind the scenes, and I'm telling you this in front of the scenes. Don't give up because God is blessing you in this building, so. Thank you very much. I yes. absolutely appreciate that. And Robin and Dr. Karen and Amber, many, many blessings to all of you and nothing yes. but yes. pure success in the future. Uh, thank you very much. And we will talk again soon. Uh, believe me, yes. this will not be our last time here on this platform, okay? Right. Well, I'll bring her on to an entree musician one day. She wants to come on. Anytime. Come on. Amber, too. Amber, you are an entree uh, filmmaker. Okay. So. There we go. I can do that. I can do that. Well, my husband is a musician. So yes, yes, yes. there you go. He's a music producer and uh, bass drummer. Yes. And I think and I think that would help him, too, um, Amber. This would help him. It is not only for 50 and over, but just musicians. So he, Jerry does, you know, he does for other uh, musicians and everything and where to and how to do your music and mm -hmm. how to know what to do and even um, collaborate, with, again, collaborate with other musicians and whatever. So um, it's not just for, it's, it's not only just for 50 and over, you know, mm -hmm. but it, you know, it's for other musicians too. If they want to come in, so. Definitely right. Uh, so, so yep. uh, you know, Robin is now the new spokesperson for the entree position. <laughs> <laughs> In case you didn't know. In case you didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Spokesman extraordinaire, Mr. Robin Williams. Thank, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Love it. <laughs> well, many blessings to you all. And that's going to do it for this episode of The Entree Musician. We definitely want to thank Robin and Karen Williams. God bless them. And uh, for Amber Spencer, man, oh man, what a wonderful documentary. You must see it. You have to see it. You need to like pause this as soon as this is over. You have to go to Amazon Prime and you have to punch in the legendary Marion Williams and enjoy and appreciate the excellence that was her life as so wonderfully told uh, in this documentary. My name is Jerry B. I am the Entree Musician. If you haven't already done so, we were talking about Amazon. You need to go and also purchase my best-selling book, which is called The Path of the Entree Musician, Nine Keys to Unlock Your Mindset, Discipline, and Focus. Go get it now and then go on over and rent the legendary Marion Williams. My name is Jerry B. It's been so fun uh, hanging out with you. I'm the Entree Musician, but you know what's most important? So are you. We will see you again next time. God bless.